morning. Welcome to The Bridge Goldsboro. I'm Pastor Cassie. And on behalf of everybody here, we're so glad you're here with us today. If you're joining us online, thank you for being here as well. We can't wait to worship together in just a few minutes. A couple of quick reminders. If you're a first time guest, we are so thankful that you're with us today. We have a special gift for you on in the lobby if you're on site today. If you're online for the first time, we also have a gift for you in the chat box today. Thank you again for joining us. And we've got a lot going on coming up. We have baptisms coming up in a couple of weeks, December 4th. If your next step is baptisms, I want you to take that connect card out from the seat back in front of you or use that online connect card and tell us that you're ready to get baptized. You're ready to take that next step. We wanna do that with you and take this journey alongside you. So we cannot wait for baptisms December 4th. Go ahead and sign up for them. Then use that connect card for anything else that you might need. If you need us to pray for you, to come alongside you another way. That's what those connect cards are for. And now let's get ready to worship. Let's stand to our feet as we watch this video. your mind you've always been with us yeah every battle you've already won yes you've already won come on y'all let's put those hands together let's worship him there is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you there is no you have lord every battle you've already won yes you've already won come on let's sing this out sing it out show me one thing he can do show me a mountain he can move yeah he's the god of the breakthrough and anything is possible anybody believe that this morning come on let's sing it show me one thing that's too hard Show me what as he can fall on belief. He's the God of the break. Doing anything is possible. It's possible.
Worshippers, my worshippers in here. Come, on, I can't see. I can't see. Are you? Oh, okay. I see you. I see you. Come on, let's worship our King, our God, and let's thank Him. Let's raise up a praise in our hearts, thanking Him for what transpired on the cross. Can we sing this together? Come on. I would be hopeless without Your goodness. I would. Desperate without your love, slave to the darkness. If it wasn't for the cross, here's what you did. You have won me with your kindness. Chase me down.
sing it out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a friend. Now I'm not with your blood. For my freedom. Hallelujah. For I am death, I live. The power of sin is overcome. It is finished, it is done. By your stripes, I'm healed. By your death, I live. The power of sin is overcome. It is finished, it is done. By your stripes, I'm healed. By your death I live The power of sin is overcome It is finished Can we sing that one more time? Okay, it is done By your stripes I live By your death I live The power of sin is overcome Let's sing that chorus Hallelujah Thank you, Jesus, I was a prisoner, now I'm not, that's the reality though, with your blood, you for my free, what are we going to say to the Lord, hallelujah for Yes, Lord. Lord, we want to honor you this morning. Thank you for what transpired on the cross, Lord. So many things, so many benefits that we have through the cross and through Christ and his obedience to go to the cross, Lord. And we, we honor you, we praise you, and we thank you for that sacrifice. And what a sacrifice it was for our sake. Lord, your love that you look beyond our sin, Lord, and yet you died for us. And Lord, we're forever grateful. We stand to honor you. We, we stand with hearts of gratitude and with hearts of praise. Not taking it for granted, but Lord, we just want to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for the cross. Thank you for what you did for us, Lord. And so this morning, we come with hearts of love. Not to ask you anything, but Lord, just to say, hey, thank you for what you have done for me for the many blessings that you have given me from, Lord, those times where you bind up accidents, <laughs> those times that you uh, blocked something that was going to harm me, Lord, that we don't even know about. Lord, we thank you. So, Lord, we lift this up to you. We lift up our hearts and this worship up to you as we came and we corporate and hopefully we sung from our hearts to sing to a great and mighty King who is worthy of it all. So, Lord, we take this time just to say thank you. And we give you praise. Can the church say amen? Amen. 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 Watch this video. Welcome to Building for the Generations, year two. That's right. We're in our second year of our capital campaign. Can you believe it? My, how time flies. And so to kick off this second year of this capital campaign, we're going into a series that's all about generosity. In this series, we're not only going to talk about how we can do something amazing that only God can do through us as we come together as a family and we give toward common goals 
goals, but we're also gonna talk about what God's word has to say about our finances. Here's why that's important. I don't know why God did this, but he designed that the litmus test of our faith is always finances. It's how generous we are. Those two things are tied hand in hand. There are a couple of things I know about the bridge. One is that you guys are an incredibly generous group of people. I mean, it's constantly amazing to me. The second thing I know is that you actually would love to be more generous than you are. I think we're all that way. I dream now and then about what it would be like to hit lotto and what I could do with the tithe of that lotto <laughs> and ministries that I could do and outreach things that I could do. You've probably been down that same journey. Well, during this series, we're gonna be teaching you some of the biblical principles that will help you do just exactly that. So in this series, we're gonna talk about uh, generosity. We're gonna talk about what it means to actually be generous and not just live a life of giving at one time or another, but actually live a life that, uh, that is generous. And you may look around and think, man, well, am I as generous as this person or am I as generous as that person? But the fact is, is that it's always equal sacrifice, but it's not always equal gifts, meaning that we could give different amounts, but when we give generously, when we give according to what we have, we are being generous in our own right. And that's what honors God. And so so because of your faithfulness over this past year, we have been able to do several key projects here at the church that we believe are going to help us reach the next generation. We've been able to do several things with our uh, projectors and screens to make our adult environment more inclusive and, and uh, better quality. We've been able to make many, many upgrades in our kids' facility and spaces, a brand new ramp. And these spaces are not only bridge kids, but they are shared by Bridge students as well. We were able to upgrade our kids' area, our foyer, our hallway, our nursery with new flooring. We were able to upgrade our worship area with new lighting. We were also able to talk to engineers, architects, look at plans, talk to contractors, because, hey, we're doing an expansion. Look at somebody and say, we're growing, amen. Well, we've also have uh, allocated funds um, towards helping people that are in addiction and helping mentor one-on-one -on -one people uh, that are in addiction right here through organizations in our very community. One of the things I'm, I'm probably the most proud of is what you've seen right here on site of the Bridge Goldsboro, and that is we have revamped all of our Bridge Kids spaces. We've evicted a lot of our office staff on the first level of the Bridge Kids area and moved them over there into what will now be known as the Commons. That'll be kind of like the, the office hub, if you will. So that means that now we can really start to hit the ground running with renovations for Bridge Kids. Tearing down walls, building some up. This right here will be the future check-in area for Bridge Kids, and we think that that's gonna bring a lot of excitement for kids as they walk down this hallway and just are amazed by some of the things and the creative details that we're gonna be bringing in the months ahead to Bridge Kids. Guys, thank you so much for your faithfulness. We're looking forward to see what God's gonna do in the days ahead. Thank you so much for being here today, watching online. Thank you so much for being with us online. I'm excited today. And I'm, I'm, you know, I say that every time I come up here, I'm excited. You ever get tired of hearing pastors say they're excited? They're always excited. I don't know why. I'm excited today specifically because today is Give Sunday. Today is Commitment Sunday. And if this is your first time here today, um, or you've, you've been here for a little bit and you haven't quite yet decided that this is your church home yet, please don't feel pressure to give today uh, because you're probably thinking, what in the world did I just walk into? Um, you've walked into a church, a family that's excited about giving sacrificially towards the next generation. That's what you've walked into. So that the next generation can see God more clearly and give their hearts to him more readily and trust him in faith. That's what you've walked into. And so we have three initiatives that we are giving towards when it comes to building for the uh, generations right here at the Bridge Goldsboro. One of those is Bridge Kids. We've done so much in the past year when we started building for the generations. We're starting today going into year two. It's three years altogether. Bridge Kids, community outreach is the second one. Uh, for us, that's specifically about giving relief to the homeless and helping those who are in addiction restore their lives. 
actually walking with them through a process through an organization here in town called Hope Center. And the third thing we're giving to is land and or a building for all of us to call home. Now, this is, if, if you're a part of this church family, like I said, if, you, if you're here for the first time today and, and you're like, what in the world's happening? Don't feel pressure to give today. You, you can give if you want to, great. But building for the generations is for those people who call this place home. And as a church family, we are committing to give sacrificially to those three initiatives. And I just got to say, it's what God does through it is going to last long after we're gone. Somebody say amen to that. The last thing I want to be is a, is a flash in the pan in the kingdom of God, here one second and gone the next. But when God gets a hold of what we do, it's lasting. Do you know everything God does is about generations? That's why in the Bible, when you read, he was the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's always talking about generations. And that's what God is into. And that's what he's gonna do through us as we give. Even our preschool and elementary kids, they've been learning throughout this series about what it means to be a good steward of, about, of what God gives. Um, and part of that is generosity. And so in just a little bit, whenever we give together, you're gonna see the kids come in here and, and give as well. And we're gonna give together in just a bit. Um, let me say this one more thing and then we'll jump into the word for today. If you're still praying about God, what is it that you want me and my family to give? Don't feel bad about that. I want you to have clarity. And so if you're not prepared to give today because uh, you're still praying about what to give, I, I want you to have clarity on that. And you'll have opportunities to give uh, anytime throughout this year. Today is special because we're, all, we're doing it all together. Um, but either way, don't miss out. Hear me, church. Do not miss out on what God wants to do in your life through generosity. Don't miss out on what God wants to do through your life because of generosity. And so in this series, we've talked about not just, hey, we're, we're gonna give on November 20th, but we've talked about how to be financially healthy according to God's word. Did you know that God has something to say about money? A lot of people get uncomfortable when pastors start to talk about money. Uh, I don't because I know ultimately it's all his and there's other, over 2000 scriptures in the Bible that talk about money and resources. And so God's not uncomfortable uh, when he talks about it. The people in the Bible weren't uncomfortable. Um, and so I'm not uncomfortable either. And I hope you're not because because when we do it according to God's word, God promises some pretty cool stuff. We've talked about that. Uh, so we've talked about what it means to have savings. We've talked about in this series what it means to not have debt and what that looks like in your life. We talked about what the Bible says about having a good plan. Did you know that the Bible says something about having a good financial plan? So we've talked about some of that stuff because I'm interested in you being healthy financially, not just giving to something because the Bible has something to say about you being healthy financially. Today, as we, as we round out this series in, in terms of, you know, in November of 2022, knowing that, hey, this is more than a series, it's a movement that's gonna go long beyond today and, and ultimately long beyond this generation. But as we round out today, I, I wanna talk about something that happens when we're generous. Not just give at one time or another, but when we become generous people that so many of you already are and we begin to give out of what, what we have and what God tells us to give. Something that God does is it's really easy to miss. You know, I really love to see somebody get excited when we hand them a hot meal and they're, they're hungry and maybe that's the only meal they've had that day or sometimes in two days. It, it, it warms my heart. I'm sure it does you too when you're able to give to somebody in need. Maybe you give them a jacket or, or some gloves or something like that. And you know they're gonna be fed. You know they're gonna get full. You know they're gonna be warm. That, that, it excites me. I, I, I get excited to watch families be reunited uh, after a long struggle with addiction and they've been restored. Last week, we had Mark Hall here from the Hope Center and he showed us a picture of somebody who had spent one year in the Hope Center after having a hard life battling addiction and the picture was with, their, with his family. Bridges that have been burned uh, now are being rebuilt with trust and there was this man who was reunited with his family after burning so many bridges. Why? Because God got a hold of him. And because when we give towards something like that, man, it's awesome to see that. How awesome was that? God is good. I love to see the faces on our preschool kids when they slide down that slide and the adults that slide down it and they know they got caught. I love to see that too. But the preschool kids' faces, they, they slide, they're, they're just so joyful. And it's because of you know, our giving. It's one of the benefits of generosity and all of those things are really benefits for here on earth. Let's turn to somebody and say earth. 
But did you know that something else happens outside this earth when we take on God's heart of generosity? And this is what it is. When we're generous, people see and respond not to not just stuff, but they see and they respond to God. Do you ever think about that? You ever think about the fact that, that when, when it's done with a generous heart, our giving can actually point people to heaven, not just what they're given, not just the thing we give them or the, the, the physical act, but it actually points people to heaven. You know, when Jesus came to this earth and he, he died and rose again, and then he went to heaven and the first church began to form, they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. There was this dynamic that they had. I want us to read about it. It's in Acts 2, chapter 44, or Acts 2, verse 44. It's, listen to this. Listen to this dynamic they had. All the believers were together and shared everything. They would sell their land and the things they owned and then divide the money and give it to anybody who needed it. The believers met together in the temples every day. They ate together in their homes, happy to share their food with joyful hearts. Some of you wouldn't share your lunch with your husband or your wife. They reach over and try to get something off your plate and you whack them like that right there. So they were, they were sharing, they, they even shared like that. Somebody say, hallelujah. I mean, you, when you get to that point, you know you're, <laughs> you're giving everything. <laughs> this was a church that genuinely shared everything they had. They gave everything. They praised God and they had favor with all the people. Isn't that a blessing? I mean, can you imagine that? What a blessing that must have been to see here on earth. But look at what else happens. I don't want you to miss it. Every day, the Lord added to those who were being what? Were being saved to the group of believers. Because of their giving, because of their generous hearts, there were people every day, literally every day, who saw God in their generosity and there was something different about them. What was it? It was the Holy Spirit speaking to them. It may have just been food that they were receiving or it may just have been some, some money that they were receiving to help, but God infused it and so they saw God in the gift. And because of that, they were making heavenly decisions about their eternity with their hearts and, and, and they eventually got to heaven. You know, it's always amazing. God could have done that part by himself. He could have just asked the church to give the thing and then God deal with their hearts on a completely different level, but he used the generosity of his church. I think that's interesting. And that's what I want us to remember as we give to building for the generations. When we're generous, people see and respond to God. You know, in Acts 2, because of their giving, people were being added to heaven every single day. Let me ask you this. Who's gonna be added to heaven because of our giving? Isn't that a question worth contemplating? Who's gonna be added to heaven? Because you know, this life is short. We get a few short years here. I, I read a statistic the other day. It was pretty interesting. It said there was a research institute. I don't know how many millions of dollars they spent to figure this out, but 100% of people who are born die. Some of you are fact-checking me right now. Like you don't know if that's really true or not. <laughs> But that's the reality of life. Everybody leaves here. We get a few short years and everybody leaves one day. And so because of that, God uses our generosity while we're here, whether it's a meal or a jacket or a gesture or, or whatever it is that we give out of generosity. And he, he does that as a means for people to see their real need, which is to make it to heaven. And, and here's why. Some of you have seen this rope before. It's an illustration that I've used a few times. If you haven't, uh, this is gonna be good. If you have, I want you to take a refresher course. This rope really represents your existence. It, it represents your existence. And this yellow part, it represents your eternity that you're gonna spend somewhere. It just goes on and on forever. Just imagine, it, it really stops right over there. But just imagine that it goes on and on forever and ever and ever, your existence in eternity. And right here on this little black part, that's the time that you get to spend on earth. And it's, it's short. And God is saying, I'm trying to get people from here in a sin-cursed world. And I gave my son Jesus here so they could accept him. Why? So they could just be happy here? No, so that they could get here in heaven. The reality is there's, there's two parts to this. There's a hell that wasn't made for you. God doesn't want you to go there. In fact, he did everything he could to ensure that you could choose to go to this place, to eternity and spend it in heaven. But that decision has to be made here by you, by me, by everybody else. And it's interesting that when he calls us to be generous, like he did in Acts 2, and he still does today, he calls us to be generous here all along the way so that people can see him and make decisions for here. And I love the fact that God's generosity is so good here. It's so good to us here. I can't count the blessings that I have here. Can you? 
I mean, some of you just, I like to say this, some of you would be dead if it wasn't for God here. I mean, but you're here because God has just blessed you. But I gotta tell you, when I look at my house and I look at my bed and I get to turn on my heat at night and you do the same and we're so grateful, that's just temporary relief. The things that we give to other people, the, the, the fact that we're gonna be able to bless so many people through building for the generations, it's good, but it's just temporary relief because you know what? We're all facing an eternity when this life is over. And so it's so important to understand our generosity cannot stop at simply money or relief or an act at one time or another here. Our generosity has to point people to heaven. Somebody say you understand that. It has to. One of the things that I love about our church is the, the, what we give to our community. One of the things we're doing on December 4th is through an organization called Cricket's Kids. There's over 400 kids in Wayne County that, get, that fall through the cracks and don't get assistance anywhere, living in poverty. And Cricket's Kids is an organization that we partner with and she does something about it. So many volunteers that come underneath this organization and they help about 75 of those families that have not gotten assistance through any of the organizations in town. They're vetted through social workers so we know the right families are getting the right, uh, right help. And we help buy Christmas presents for them. We take their parents shopping. We watch their kids. We teamed up with Highway 55. They get a hot meal. They get food. Books a million donates books. And so these kids get all kinds of great things that they wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to have. And our church, the bridge, is a host site for that. The bridge Goldsboro is one of three of our locations that's a host site. And there's all kinds of, of people that are coming here. 25 families specifically are coming here. And they're going to be able to have some great, great, great relief on Christmas. That's powerful. But you know what's more powerful than that? Is when they get that and they begin to see that here's a group of loving people that, that say this, God has given so much to us to get us to heaven. And we just believe that we're that same group of people that wanna give the same way. We believe that's how God wants us to be and so we give too. And so when they open up on Christmas morning and their parents get to see their kids open those Christmas presents, yeah, it's all in here. It's relief but the Holy Spirit does something with that and it points them here. We're inviting these people to make spiritual decisions as well. So as Christians, God calls us to give here on earth, but you know what? He wants us to be generous because that's how people are gonna respond to him. That's how people are gonna know about heaven. If they can't see Jesus in our giving, all the stuff that we are able to give to the community, all the things that we're able to fund here at the church, if people don't see Jesus in it, then I think we've missed the point. Here's why. Because generosity is a heavenly-minded endeavor. It has to be. Now, giving at one time or another, just kind of throwing some money at things, that's an earthly endeavor. We, we can give relief to all kinds of stuff. But generosity, opening up your heart, saying, God, I know it's all yours. Tell me what you want me to put where for your kingdom's sake. That's a heavenly-minded endeavor. Because people begin to see God through it. I want you to imagine being lost deep in the woods on an 80,000-acre park. I just want you to grasp that for just a minute. You've taken a hike deep into the woods and you forgot your compass in the car, okay? Can you imagine that? Some of you are like, I wouldn't use a compass anyway. I would pull out my phone and forget, you don't have a phone. You have taken a sabbatical from technology. I think I just lost half of you right there. But just imagine with me, if you can, you're, you're lost in the woods, you've got one bottle of water left and, and one granola bar, and you weren't expecting to spend the night in the woods, but now you are. The sun's going down, you're completely lost, there's no way out, you've walked and walked and walked, and you cannot find any sense of civilization anywhere. And so you drink the last bit of your water, you eat the last bit of your granola bar for dinner, and you know that in a few days, you're probably, if you don't get help, you are going to either starve, uh, Actually, you can go a lot longer than that without food, but water, you can't. And you're dirty and you're tired and you wake up the next day and you've stayed up all half the night trying to fend off animals and there is just no hope for you anywhere. And then on day four, you're tired, you're, you're, you're sleep deprived, you're dehydrated and all of a sudden you hear somebody coming in the woods. 
Thank you, Jesus, right? And they come and it's getting dark, but you hear them rustling through the leaves and, and they come and they, they, you, you see them and they, have, they look great. They look like they're just on a hike and you're like, this person knows how to get out of here. And, and they sit down, you already have a fire going and they're like, hey, I've got some food for you. I've got some water for you. And you're sitting around this campfire and you're like, this is so great. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. And they look at you and you look at them. And then the thought is just so inevitable. Like, where's the way out of here? And they look at you and they're like, let's not talk about that right now. I just wanna give these things to you and let you enjoy this relief that I'm giving you. And you're like, yeah, this is good and everything, but, but I, I really need to find a way out of here. I've been here for four days. My family is missing me. And, I'm, I, and they're like, no, just take, take this. Let's just take in this moment for a minute. And about the time you're ready to jump over the fire and punch them in the face, they look at you and say, this blesses me more than it blesses you. Isn't that what we do when we leave sort of times? Man, I was so blessed. Uh, I was blessed more than they were. And you're like, point me to the way out of here. I, I can't stay here any longer. And, and that's how it is if people can't see Jesus in our giving. Because you know what? We give them relief here on this little black part, this part that we have on earth. But if we don't show them the path to heaven, then it is pointless. If we don't point them to Jesus, in our, if they can't see eternity, in our giving, then we're giving them temporary relief here. And when they die here, they could very well face hell. Is that making sense? That's why generosity is a heavenly minded endeavor. And when we give, we have to, to give to the point that, you know what, God, we want not just to throw money at a thing, not just the, 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 the tube slide in preschool is great, God, but it's just a slide at the end of the day. We want people to see Jesus in it. We want kids to just beg their parents to bring them back here because they're having so much fun. And, and in that, the Holy Spirit's moving in their hearts saying that there is a God. There's a God who loves you so much and you can make a decision for me. God wants to add people to heaven because of our giving. There's a, a girl that goes to church here. She's actually a young woman. I'm trying not to say that she's old because she's really not. And a couple of years ago, she was going through a very hard transitional time in her life and, and she was actually going through a divorce. Very, very, very difficult time. And she turned to God, didn't grow up in church, didn't really know a whole lot about the church, but she knew I need something different. And so she began to point her heart at God looking for something and she stumbled across the bridge Goldsboro. And she started watching online first because it would be weird to kind of come here, should check it out, you know? And eventually she ended up here. And you know what we were offering right about the time that she got here was a, a, a bridge group called Divorce Care, where we take people that go through the tragedy of divorce and we help them make sense of their life and do it in a God-infused way. And so she jumped in, she, she signed up, she began to go through Divorce Care. Now, why was she able to do that? Well, because that and many other opportunities, other ministries at this church were funded because we have generous people here. Because it was funded. So she started to heal. She started, uh, she started walking through this very difficult time in her life, knowing that there was a God that loved her and there was a God that does give grace. And if she were to turn her life to him, he could actually do something with the mess that sort of defined her life in that moment. And she ended up giving her life to Jesus because of that. That's powerful. She was baptized not long after that. It doesn't end there. She's still part of this church. She's still living for the Lord. She's still in bridge groups. She's one of the most excited people that I know that walks through these doors at church. She started serving. In fact, she serves in a couple different areas now, but guess one of the other places that she serves is she's the voice that you hear making a phone call if you're a first time guest here. Such a pleasant voice. Somebody that's, that's come from a place that wasn't God filled, but God got a hold of her. Why? Because there were generous people who gave and she began to see God through the gift. And now she's on her way to heaven because of our generosity that pointed her there. There's so many more stories just like that. And I just want you to imagine who else is gonna be impacted because of what we give towards building for the generations. Who is gonna be added to heaven because of our giving? What if it's your kids? What if it's your spouse? What if it's your friends? What if it's people you love? Some of your kids are lining up outside right now playing jingle bells and you hear them and you're struggling to listen to me because you think Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> listen to those bells. Those are little kids' hearts. They're souls. 
And right now, <laughs> right now, they just, they seem to be work in your life, you know? But you know what? They're souls that God is literally speaking to just as much as he's speaking to you. And when we give towards building for the generations, man, so much goes into what we can do for them here on earth. But more so than that, they're pointed to heaven. You know, eternities are gonna be changed because people are gonna see Jesus in our generosity. I can tell you this, there's been over 20 salvations at the Bridge Goldsboro since we started building for the generations. And that's just what we know through people that have filled out connect cards. But there's, I, I guarantee you, there's hundreds of people that have been impacted for eternity since we started building for the generations last year. We've had 18 baptisms since we started building for the generations. We actually have several more that are scheduled to be baptized on December 4th because of, of people that are giving to this church and people seeing God in it. And if the past year is any indication of what God is gonna do in people as we go forward, man, I am excited for that. How much more could God do in us when we become generous people and we continue to be generous people? He's gonna do things in kids. He's gonna do things in our community. He's gonna do things in making sure that we have a wonderful place to come worship and, and call our own generations after us. But I want you to remember what this is ultimately about. It's about souls. It's about getting people from, from here where we are on earth to heaven. That's what it's about. it's about. It's about being generous and saying, God, we're gonna give, but we want you to shine through it to all the recipients that come out of this so that they can see something more eternal and not just something temporal. That's why it's more than just an act at one time or another, giving. But generosity is when we open our hearts and we have heaven in mind. And I, I really want our generosity to be mainly influenced by eternity. I want it to be influenced by eternity. I'm gonna come over here and get this rope one more time. Our stage tech did a really good job of getting it out of the way. Really good job. <laughs> but I, I want us to think about this. We, we can be influenced by eternity. Man, people are gonna go to heaven and we begin to open our hearts and say, God, this is all yours anyway. Get people to heaven. Or we can be influenced by the world because the world gives us a template too on how to give. And it says this, it says, we're gonna work, 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 work all through these years. And we're gonna save, save, save all through these years. And when we get right about here, we're gonna stop and take it easy and be as comfortable as we possibly can. That's what the world says. And, and that thinking can't go up and thinking about eternity go up at the same time. It just can't. We're gonna work, 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 save, 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 and then literally get to the finish line where this is on the other side and just stop and be as comfortable as we possibly can. And I'm thinking, what about all of this? What about this? What about the people that God wants to use you to reach so that so they can experience this? Can you imagine a runner running a race and, and they get right here to the finish line and they stop and they lay down in the track? And they say, I think I'm just gonna take it easy here. I'm gonna get as comfortable as I can here. And that's so not biblical. That's so not what, in terms of the track illustration, that would be stupid. We'd be going, get up, get up. There's, the finish line is right there. Don't stop, keep going. And Paul in the New Testament is saying that same thing. He's like, look, when you get here, it's time to press in. When you're here, yes, yeah, save. We've, we've talked in this series about saving and the importance of it and, and doing uh, your finances God's way. He's gonna bless you a lot here, but we gotta work towards it so that when we get here, we push forward and we're thinking past this part and we're thinking to this. This is what he told the Philippian church. I'm gonna close with this. In chapter three, verse 13, he said, my friends, I don't think that I've already arrived. He said, I'm, I'm not here yet. I haven't crossed that finish line. He said, but this is what I do. I forget what's behind and I struggle for what's ahead. Why do you think he's struggling? Well, because when you make decisions with a heavenly mindset, it's gonna fight the things that only make you think about earth. You're gonna wrestle with the parts of you that are only thinking about how I can be comfortable here. But he said, I struggle sometimes, but I'm pressing towards this finish line to get to this part. I don't stop. He said, I run towards the goal. I don't slow down. He said, I run towards it so that I can win the prize of being called to retirement. <laughs> no, he said, to heaven. 
I run towards it. I struggle for it. This is the prize that God offers because of what Christ Jesus has done. And all of us, listen, all of us, he says, who are mature, that you should take uh, note of this. You should think in the same way. He said, and if any of you think differently, God will make it clear to you. I love how he says, if you disagree with this, you're wrong, but God will show you. <laughs> he says, God, God will make it clear to you. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's not saying different things to different people when it comes to the Bible. His, his voice will always be backed up by his word. And so today when we give, we're gonna give with heaven in mind. We're gonna give generously knowing that God is gonna do some pretty great things here on earth with what we give. He will. The people who are benefited by it, man, they're gonna be so blessed, but they're also gonna see something else. They're gonna see him in it. And they're gonna make decisions to give their lives to him. That's, that's, what, that's the exciting part about when we give with a heavenly mindset. And so what we're gonna do right now is, is we're gonna give. And I'm, the way we always give is the leaders always go first. And I'm the first one in line for that because I will always put the example out there of what I'm asking the congregation to do. I'm never gonna ask you to do something and then back off of it. And so, so this is mine. And I want you to, to take yours and we're gonna come up here and we're gonna give together right here in this basket, right here in the front. If you're watching online, you can give online. Some of you in this congregation have given online and that's kind of the way you're giving and that's fine. I want you to grab an envelope in the seat back in front of you. If you have one, whenever you came in, the ushers may have given you one and you're just right already gave on it or gave online on it. And I want you to be a part of this. I want you to come up here together. Why? Because we just wanna show off? No, because I wanna show you the excitement of what God is doing in our congregation just like this child right here who's so excited, she's gonna beat you down here. I love it. There's a lot of excitement in this room. If you're here for the first time, don't feel pressure to give. If you haven't decided that this is your church home, don't feel pressure to give. But we're gonna give together. And so our leaders, if you guys can go ahead and get up, our senior leaders can go ahead and get up and come down here. Uh, our lay leaders, directors, captains, team leaders, some of them are serving today, um, so they're not able to come down. But if, if you're here, just go ahead and get up and come on down. And I want you to see that, you know what? Your leaders are invested. It's not just us. We're not just asking you to, to, to give. Your leaders are going first. And then, then our kids are gonna go. And they're, they're already excited. We're already holding them back. And then after that, I want you guys to get up and just sort of, if you're on site today, flow this way and get in line. And we're just gonna come right through here, drop off our, our, our gifts, our offerings, our investments really in the kingdom of God right here in this basket. And as we do that, we're gonna sing. We're gonna sing a song called You Can, knowing that we can't change hearts with our giving, but God can. We, we can't restore broken dreams, but God can. We, we can't have breakthrough in our life and create it because of what we give, but God can. We can't put families back together like we saw last week, but God can. We can't save souls, but God's word says that he will use our generosity to do it. And people can see him in what we give where things are impossible with humans, God can. Do you believe that? I want you to stand to your feet. We're gonna sing this song together. We're gonna give together.
Thank you, Jesus. Let me say a prayer for us as we go. God, thank you so much for the opportunity to give. I'm reminded of the scripture in the Old Testament where David said, who are we? Who am I that we're able to give as generously as we do for it all comes from you. And so God pray, uh, we pray a prayer of blessing Father over everything that was given today. Multiply it Lord, do more than we ever could with it by ourselves. Ultimately so point people to you because of it. Populate heaven and empty hell. Lord, I pray a blessing on the giver Lord. Be true to your word that says you'll bless them richly God to, and, and, and you'll come through for them. Thank you so much for your word that's true. Whenever we open up our hearts and are generous. In the name of Jesus, can we say amen together? Amen. See you guys next week. For being a part of the Building for the Generation series. I'm so glad to be part of your church family and you a part of this church family as we give together. I can't wait to see what God's gonna do through your commitment and my commitment and the commitments of this church family towards Building for the Generations. If you haven't already given, it's not too late to jump in. I want you to be a part of this, so don't forget to pray. Ask God what he might have you and your family to give towards this great initiative that God is doing right here in our town. I can't wait to see you next week. I want you to have a great Thanksgiving week.